I have an article here from Variety.com, Crisis at Marvel. Jonathan Major's backup plans to Marvel's reshoots, reviving original Avengers, and more issues revealed. I'll link this in the description box and read it for yourself. It's a beefy article. I would recommend reading it. It's got plenty of revelations. Some of them you would know, some of them you wouldn't. But let's get right to it. This past September, a group of Marvel creatives, including studio chief Kevin Feige, assembled in Palm Springs for the studio's annual retreat. Most years, a vibe would have been confident, even cocky given how the premier superhero brand, owned by Disney since 2009, has remade the entertainment business in its image. Then it goes to talk about it is angst-ridden this time, though, because they talk about Jonathan Majors, which his trial on domestic violence charges is slated to begin later this month. So we'll have to wait to see what happens there and stuff, and about how he's, you know, with Kang. He, he's supposed to be the next big bad. They might decide to, you know, recast or go a different way. Some people are saying, well, that go with Doctor Doom and stuff. And we'll see. But anyway, it's you know kind of funny. Is Marvel in trouble? It's like the question. Uh, yes, I mean they they can turn it around, but they're absolutely in trouble if you if you try to deny that. I mean, come on, it's crazy. Uh, Marvel was truly fucked with the whole Kang angle, says one top deal maker who has seen the final Loki episode. They haven't had an opportunity to rewrite until very recently, but I don't see a path to how they move forward with it. Beyond the bad press for Majors, the brain trust at Marvel is also grappling with the November release of the Marvels. Since 19th Marvel has been plagued with lengthy reshoots and now appears likely to underwhelm at the box office. Then it goes on and talks about how, you know, Endgame had made $2.8 billion. It's the high watermark for the studio. Whereas, like, the Marvels is slated to, you know, as it says later on, it's, it's not going to open up very well. More than likely. I mean, you, you never know. Some, some of these pundits are wrong, but we'll see. And it talks about the more you do, the tougher it is to maintain quality. Because this is the part where they kind of blame the glut of TV and movie and stuff. Which I think there is something to be said that they've had too many projects with the movies and the TV shows and stuff. But I think the, the overall problem is just quality. If you were having a lot of stuff coming out, but it was all high quality, people would be celebrating they'd be happy. So this idea that, oh, well, you know, there's just too much stuff. No, it's it's more that it's bad stuff. Too much bad stuff. Anyway, then it talks about the movie, which cost $250 million to make. I think that number is a lot higher, but whatever. And sees Brie Larson reprising her role as Captain Marvel's tracking open to $75 to $80 million. I'll be really interested to see what happens, because I've seen some people say 50 to 60 or whatever, but anyway. It talks about far below the 185 million of Doctor Strange 2 took in domestically in his debut weekend last year. Then it goes on and talks about directed by Nia DaCosta, yada yada yada, eyebrows were raised again when DaCosta began working on another film, while the Marvels was still in post-production. If you're directing a $250 million movie, it's kind of weird for the director to leave with a few months to go. It is, it's very weird. You know, but anyway, they held a test screening of the Marvels in Texas. In June, the audience gave the film middling reviews. Not really a surprise. I mean, you know, just based on history. Because the movies haven't been very good lately. Just in general. You know, Marvel's never been in the business of being average. Kevin's real superpower, his genius, has always been in post-production. is getting his hands on movies and making sure that they finish strongly. These days, he's spread thin. I also think that's some bullshit. I think a lot of the problem is they're trying to spread this message. Well, we've got to have all these strong women. You know, we got to have all these you know strong people of color. And everything, and they're just going against, which is all fine and dandy on its own, except for the fact that they try to tear down the, the traditional, you know, white male heroes in order to do that, which is ridiculous. It's like you can have your strong women all they want. That's that's fine. I, hell, I, hell, I love that. Same with the, you know, the strong people of color and you know, all that stuff. No one's got a problem with that. The problem is when you're tearing people down to make them seem better in comparison. Because then they both just look like shit, essentially. But anyway, they talk, then they talk about in Quantum Mania, the shock rippled through the Regency Village Theater in Westwood over some shoddy CGI. You know, it was insane. I've never seen anything like that in my entire career. Everyone was talking about it because they said there were at least 10 scenes where the visual effects had been added at the last minute and were out of focus. Because the movie had been swapped with, with the, the Marvels, so it pushed it up at, ahead by four and a half months. Blah, blah, blah. It talks about. You know, the, the Marvel VFX workers voted unanimously to unionize in September, sparking an industry-wide trend. And they talk about the pay and long hours at Marvel is the reason we had to start our unionization process. They also want to use VFX for everything. Then it goes on and talks some more about 
Victoria Alonso, they try to, you know, make a scene, well, you know, she, she was in charge of uh, visual effects and stuff, and like quality control, essentially, you know. And, they, and then some people are saying, well, it's not her, it's not Kevin, and they talk about it in the She-Hulk, you know, the flashback of her character's, like, first transformation was, wasn't supposed to take place until episode 8, which was the penultimate episode. But after Marvel's brain trust watched the footage, it realized the scene needed to happen in the pilot episode so that audiences could see more of the character's backstory early. Which is kind of a, duh, what the hell? Why wouldn't you put that in there right off the bat? You know, whatever. This person here, it's not Victoria, it's not, you know, that's Kevin. And even above Kevin. Those issues should be addressed in pre-production. Yeah, of course they should. But they should also be addressed in post-production and so on and such forth. If, if something slips through the cracks, yada, yada, yada. Here's also a problem. It said, all the while, Marvel was bleeding money with a single episode of She-Hulk costing some $25 million, dwarfing the budget of a final season episode of HBO's Game of Thrones. Marvel, Disney, you know, more Disney, but I guess, just not not even just Disney, a bunch of movie uh, companies in general are just notoriously terrible with their money. How in the hell can a She-Hulk episode cost $25 million? I know inflation and stuff, but Christ almighty. It's ridiculous. They talk about the Chilk special effects were out of focus in multiple scenes. And yada yada yada. They talk about well, it used to be Marvel was you know bankable and everything. Here's a, here's one part I didn't really know. Case in point: the Blade reboot with Marhar Shala Ali. Sorry, if I probably butchered his name. Sorry about that. Signed on for the eponymous role of a vampire. Things look promising for a 2023 release date. The project has gone through at least five writers two directors, and one shutdown six weeks before production. Absolutely terrible. Two, two directors and one shut... Or, I mean, uh, my, my mistake. One person familiar with the script, Permutation, says the story at one point morphed into a narrative led by women and filled with life lessons. That's exactly what you want. You know, as, as I, I've seen somebody say, the life, one of the life lessons must have been that uh, you know, the white middle class are the true vampires. But <laughs> anyway, Blade was relegated to the fourth lead. A bizarre idea considering that the studio had two-time Oscar winner Ali on board. It is an extremely bizarre idea. And it's his movie. It's called Blade. It's not called whoever the hell. You know, but anyway. Then they're talking about that the, the speculation is that they want to make the movie on a budget of less than $100 million, which would be extremely smart. Figure public knowledge and the downside of our Marvel TV glut, blah, blah, blah. You know, sources... Have, have said there have been talks to bring back the original gang for an Avengers movie. That would include reviving Robert Downey Jr.'s Iron Man and Scarlett Johansson's Black Widow, both of whom are killed off in Endgame. That shouldn't be a stumbling block. In comic books, beloved characters are often killed off only to be resurrected thanks to the power of things like the multiverse. Could not disagree more. This is one of the big reasons I... I this is just the, the fucking dumbest thing ever. It's worked so well for comic books, you fucking idiots. Like, what the hell? You know... If, if, if they do that, if they bring back Robert Downey Jr. and Scarlett Johansson and stuff with some bullshit, that's crossing the line that they won't be able to cross, or they won't be able to come back from. If you if you just remove the, the idea of the specter of death, that just it's, would be the fucking stupidest thing they could possibly do. But, you know, it's I, I mean, I could see it happening, sadly, because if, if they get that desperate, you know, if they were to... For to wave a whole, you know, pile of money in front of these people's faces, are they going to turn it down? But anyway, then it goes on and blah 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 and talks some about majors and everything. You know, recasting majors is also an option. Blah blah blah. There's one big, one bright spot. Guardians three. It talks about how we did made 845 million worldwide, which I mean, you know, it's good. And then it talks some about Deadpool three and stuff and you know the X-Men and, and how that could be the saving grace and all this kind of stuff and it kind of wraps up there and everything I've already spent way longer on this than I had planned I had planned on making this a shorter video but there, like I said there was a lot here I would recommend reading it you know all for yourself because like I said I glossed over some stuff but I, I don't agree with the overall idea that there's just too much too many TV shows and movies I mean there you, you could definitely argue there is no question I would argue that the quality is by far the biggest reason. The quality has just gotten worse and worse. Not just the visual effects, but just in terms of the overall tone, everything. Everybody's quippy. Everybody's got some goddamn quip to make all the time. You can't have a serious moment because somebody's going to make a fucking fart joke or some shit like that. It's just absolute nonsense. You, you know, you know, you got a MODOK, 
you know, shit like Modoc showing up in Ant-Man 3 and everything. Won't you just stop being a dick? And stuff like that. And it's like, what? This is supposed to be like big budget action movies for adults, not for, like, I mean, nobody's, I mean, don't get me wrong. The Marvel movies, I'm not saying they're like, they're, they're made for adults or whatever. But they're not made for like preschool kids either. You know what I mean? Like, it's, just, it's like, can't you find a good balance where, you know, you can have enough adult type stuff that people aren't going to be rolling their eyes all the time. Anyway, I'm starting to ramble here. I've already gone ten and a half freaking minutes here. Sorry about that. I usually try to keep these a lot shorter. Like I said, I'll link this in the description box. You read it for yourself. You know, let me know what you think and everything. It's like I said, a lot of revelations here. Not all of them I agree with and stuff, but whatever. Anyway, thank you very much for watching and have a good one.